Alright, we're going to try to write the equation of a line, but it's the vector equation of a line. So it's a little bit different, but not really all that much. Um, so let's say that we have a line that goes through the points 3, 7, and 10, 11. Okay? So what I'm going to do, uh, this has to do with vectors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a vector between those two points. Um, so that vector is going to be uh, terminal minus initial. So 10 minus 3, comma 11 minus 7. I'm kind of color coding this for you, so hopefully uh, you can see those colors. And then that's going to clean up to just uh, 7, comma 4. All right, so on the line, uh, if I start at the initial point of 3, 7, um, what I want to do is go over 7, up 4, so it gives me that vector. But remember, vectors, um, they're not like fixed in space, so what I can do is I can take that vector and translate it down to the origin. So that vector would be there, um, and you can see I've gone over 7, and I've gone up 4 to get that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, additional points on the line. So if I put another point on the line there, so uh, it looks like it's around, I don't know, 7, comma, whatever. Um, so x is 7, try to find that. Um, and make a vector there. Well, that little vector that I just drew is actually just a scalar multiple of this vector v. Um, so I can say that w, I'm going to call it w1, is just t1, which is the scalar, times v. Um, and then t1 would have to be less than 1 because uh, w1 is a little shorter. It has less magnitude than v. Um, I can do it again. So I'm going to put another point around uh, 13, x is 13, um, and draw another vector. Now this vector is also a scalar multiple of v. So I'm going to call it w2. Um, in this case, t2 would have to be bigger than 1 because uh, this vector has a, a larger magnitude, um, but it's in the same direction. Uh, I can go in an opposite direction. So I put a, a point now at around negative 2 and uh, draw that vector. And that vector, I'll call it w3, is t3 times v. Uh, in this case, t3 would have to be a negative value because the vector has uh, switched direction. And in general, it looks like uh, all these vectors that I'm writing can be written as w is just... Uh, t times v, so scalar multiples of that vector v. Uh, so that's actually the big idea that we're going to use. Now, we said that vectors aren't really fixed in space, but what we can do is we can, uh, we can fix them in a certain place, and the way we do that is by choosing the initial point that we want to use. Um, so I'm going to use 3, 7 as the initial point, and then I'm going to call the other point on the line x, y. And so what I'm going to do is the vector w that I keep dealing with is actually just the vector with initial point 3, 7, and terminal point x, y, so I can write w as x minus 3 comma y minus 7. And then if I go back to this equation in the box, w is equal to t times v, um, I can write the equation of the line. So the equation of the line is going to look like um, x minus 3 comma y minus 7, so that's one vector, and it has to be a scalar multiple of um, 7, 4, so t times 7, 4. That's actually the vector equation of the line. So let's uh, summarize that a little bit, and then we'll do an example. So vector of equation of a line. So let's say we know that it, the line itself goes through the points x0, y0, and x1, y1. So those are on the line. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate something called the direction vector. So the direction vector is um, the vector that's between the two given points. Um, so it's, it's kind of similar to slope. Uh, you know, slope tells you delta y over delta x. tells you how to get from one point to the next. Uh, direction vector does the exact same thing. So it tells you, uh, if you know a point on the line, this direction vector is going to tell you how to get to another point on the line. So we'll do x1 minus x0, comma y1 minus y0, which again is very similar to slope. Um, and then the equation of the line is easy enough to write. So that's going to be um, x minus x0, comma y minus y0 equals t times uh, that direction vector. So Every vector that we get is just going to be a scalar multiple of our direction vector. And it's x0, y0, uh, or you could x use x1, y1. It doesn't make a difference. Any point on the line can be used there. Um, that's what anchors it to the line. So that's what fixes it in space where we want. And uh, an alternative version of this can be written as uh, just x, comma y is equal to uh, the vector x0, comma y0 plus t times v. Um, so that's a really common way that you'll see it used. Uh, so let's do an example. And the example is we have a line that goes through 5, 3, and 8, 5. So we calculate our direction vector, which gives us 3, 2. And then we can just write the equation of the line. Uh, and then, you know, depending on the question, you're done. 
uh, but we're not going to be done because we want to really understand what's happening. So that's the equation of the line. I'm going to write it in that alternative way. Uh, what's nice about writing it in the alternative way is that you actually now have a function that generates vectors. So if I give you a value of t, you can use that value of t to just generate a new vector. Um, for example, if t is 0, we get 5, 3 out of that equation. If t is 1, we get 8, 5 out of that equation, but we're going to deal with that in a second. Uh, so I set up a grid and I kind of graphed it. And then if we set up a table and do exactly what I was saying. So if t is equal to 0, you plug in 0 uh, in that uh, rewritten equation and you get 5, 3 plus 0 times 3, 2, which just gives you 5, 3. If I plot that vector, uh, you can see, so it's in uh, its component form, so the initial point is the origin. So you move over 5 and up 3, and you get a point that's on the line. If I let t equal 1, I get 8, 5. So again, it's in component form, so uh, start at the origin, you move over 8 and up 5, you get another point on the line. If I let t equal 2, I get 11, 7. Start at the origin, move over 11 and up 7, another point on the line. So what we're really getting here is, um, it's a set of, or a collection of vectors whose terminal points all fall on the same line. Um, and then I, I could go with negative values of t. So t is negative 1, I get 2, 1. Another uh, vector whose terminal point is on the line. Uh, negative 3 would give me negative 4, negative 3, which is another vector whose terminal point is on the line. So that's really what's happening here. Um, and it's, it's useful and kind of neat. What's really useful is that in three dimensions, the process is exactly the same, so learning it in two dimensions is a really good idea because you get a good sense of what's happening. And in three dimensions, the notion of slope, uh, it gets challenging, right, because we have a third dimension, so we have to come up with some other concept. And direction vectors are a great idea because um, they're going to work for you. So I want to show you one more thing. Where uh, So this is the equation that we got, and I am going to uh, look at it and say, if two vectors are equal to each other, then their corresponding components must be equal, right? So um, the first component of the first vector equals the first component of the second vector, which tells me that x minus 5 is equal to 3t. And then the same thing will be true about the second component. So y minus 3 is equal to 2t. Uh, I can solve each of these for t now. So t is x minus 5 over 3, or t is y minus 3 over 2. And then if they're both equal to t, they must be equal to each other. So we have this. And then from there, I can actually solve this. Uh, I'm going to solve for y minus 3 or get the y part on its own side. So y minus 3 is 2 thirds x minus 5. You might recognize that as point slope form um, because it is point slope form. So it's very easy to go from the vector equation to point slope form. Uh, what we're really doing is we're eliminating that t value. It's called eliminating the parameter. Um, and you're going to find yourself doing that a lot as well. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.